Mini models mystify maker, gaps in G-code, or grinding gears, leading to skip steps and streak surfaces. And vertical vibrations vandalize the print. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 218. Next week's form next. I should probably get packing. Let's get into it. So we're starting off with an interesting one, with why is everything printing so much smaller? You might say extrusion multiplier, steps per millimeter on the motor, but if you take just a little look closelier here, we can see that the calipers are actually reading right about 26 or so, but they're showing 21. Do we know what's happened here, kids? Got a nice pair of Mitsu Toyus here, and the thing with calipers is that they all have a zero button right there and on calipers like Mitsutoyu's do not hit that button unless you're very certain you want it to go back to zero on these cheaper calipers the ones you can buy for sub twenty dollars on Amazon you can buy them from Harbor Freight and I'm sure a long list of the usual scumbags they don't hold tolerances and they don't hold their actual values as well as something like this you just kind of expect a you get what you pay for quality unfortunately at some point this thing has either lost its zero or has been re-zeroed somehow in a negative fashion the best thing to do shut the calipers hit zero the thing you want to be careful of even with expensive calipers is moving them in and out rapidly that is how you can often get them to lose where they're located and that's likely what happened here but this is one of those cases where it wasn't the machine. Yeah, it looks like it could be a little bit small, but we expect some level of tolerance with 3D printing. We don't expect five millimeters worth of tolerance. We expect eh, a quarter of a millimeter is generally considered, in my opinion, expected tolerance for modern 3D printers running at fast speeds. Yes, you can dial them in to get down to like 50 micron that is 0.05 millimeters worth of tolerance and certainly if you slow them down you will get better tolerance but these modern high-speed printers generally the faster you go you give up some of your accuracy in the process but nonetheless it is always good to make sure that your calipers or whatever measuring tool that you're using are actually calibrated and working in spec a great way to do this is to have a test subject on hand that you have a known diameter for or a known size for so you can measure it. And that will give you kind of that idiot check. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This ever happened to you? I know it's happened to us before, but I've caught it before kind of pounding my head against the wall. I'm like, that doesn't seem like the right size. And I'm like, hold on, put it back, hit the zero. It was the right size all along, I'm just dumb. But yeah, love to know your thoughts down below. And hey, while you're down there, my name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is PrintFix Fighter, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And I guess also the tools that you use. And don't forget, ultimately, we are the biggest tools in our own workshops. And it's probably not the tool's fault. Or is it? But if you are having issues with your 3D printers, you can reach out to us on all the social medias. Make a video, tag us in that description, and we'll get notified of it. We can show it off here on the channel on a future Friday episode and help you get your machines back up and running so you don't end up like this individual where they are at their wits end. We've got a CR-10S here, 204 on the hot end, a very specific number, bed temp of 60, slicer is Cura. So this is gonna be one of the older CR-10s that does not have input shaping. That is a good thing to remember. And based on the comments, they are actually using a raft, which I should tell you initially, don't use rafts. I don't know why we still have rafts in the slicers. It is very much a holdover from the 3D printers of yesteryear, which did not have heated beds. That's how we would be printing ABS back in the day. We would have a raft, which would be a sacrificial bit of material that would warp. We would expect it to warp, and then your part would be printed on top of the raft. Then you separated the two pieces, you had a part that had minimal to no warp, and you had a raft, which you had already guessed would be junk, and it worked out well. But we are getting inconsistent extrusion lines here, and well, that can really mess up your day. 
we see that in one direction-ish, it looks okay, but every now and then it doesn't. Being that this is a Gen 1 Creality Machine, check the extruder. We can see the hot end right here. It's Bowden. That means that there is this tube that goes back to an extruder that is generally sitting behind the V-wheels right here on the Z-axis. Now, the other thing to check is also to make sure that your V-wheels themselves are tight up against the rail and that you don't have any slippage. You don't want them to be so tight that you can't physically move it, but it should resist sliding if you hold the wheels tight and try to move the carriage. If it slides when you're holding the wheels tight and moving the carriage too easily, go ahead and tighten the eccentric nut. It should be the one on the bottom side. That is a nut that as you turn it, it is oblong. So the V-wheel will get closer and then further and then closer and then further again and again and again. So if you go a little bit too far, just turn it back. It's no big deal. Traditionally on these Gen 1 Creality machines, they are plastic extruders were the problem. The extruder idler was under a ton of spring pressure and that spring pressure would often snap the idler arm and you wouldn't notice it initially, but basically it would allow the filament to skip around. This could cause the inconsistent extrusion that we're seeing, but because we're seeing it at somewhat of a consistent pattern here, and yeah, it's peeling up a little bit. I think that has more to do with the bed being clean and it being a little too far away. The best bet is to one, get rid of the raft. We do not want the raft anymore. Rafts are old. We don't use them. Use a brim if you're having issues with things sticking. Whoa, Yankee with no brim. Use a really wide brim. Print a Benchy with like a 30 millimeter brim. That will give you time to manually adjust the bed level and the Z offset with the knobs on the bottom of the bed as it's printing so you can actually deal with it while it's live. Be aware, you'll have to kind of be knowledgeable of where the machine is going to move so it doesn't catch your hands while it's doing it because you don't want to catch these hands nor do you want the machine to catch your hands. So be careful. As long as you take a little bit of care and precaution, you'll be able to modify that bed level, although we really should call it tramming, but we call it leveling as well as that Z offset to get everything dialed in. Rafts though will traditionally do really wide, thick layers for those first few layers to get a good adhesion down to the plate. So we might not actually be seeing something that is outside of what we are expecting. However, the line width being varying from decently wide to decently thin tells me that we might have some rocking on the x-axis itself. X-axis. X-axis. That rocking could be creating basically a variable Z offset. So when it's moving in one direction, maybe it's being pulled up. And when it's moving in the other direction, it's being pushed down. Check all of those things. I would start with the extruder just to make sure the idler is in good shape. You can get an all metal extruder for a CR10 or an Ender 3. They, they run the same extruders for relatively cheap. Go and get one. Like, seriously, they, they're under 10 bucks the last time I looked, and that will increase the life of this machine considerably. Next, check those eccentric nuts on the x-axis. Make sure they're okay. And as long as they're tight as well, then get rid of the raft. Print. I don't care if it's a benchy. It could be a big block. Something with a lot of brim lines on it so you're able to dial in that bed level. But for this machine itself, you could also look at saying it's time to look at auto leveling. You can get things like BL touches or the CR touch from Creality, but recognize you will have to upgrade firmwares to enable that in there. And be careful because upgrading machines can be a very dangerous and slippy slope that creates the printer of Theseus issue, which none of us want to get into. Grain of salt and caution there when possible. Next up from our fan discord from Pierce Prince 3 d they're asking why the actual heck is there a line in their print? They're printing in some PETGCF here, and the part looks pretty decent overall. It's got that really nice, clean PETG look on it with the carbon fiber that basically eliminates all layer lines, except the very obvious one that we can see about three quarters of the way up on this part. They were wondering why it happened, and I looked at it and said, oh, yeah, it warped. We can see right there, it's pulled up from the build plate. This is a Sovel SV08 or SV08 Maxim actually not 100% sure which one it is. And this part is at a diagonal, which tells me it's 
probably pretty big. If you're going to print really big parts like this, make sure that you have a good size brim on that part to really stick it down. And if you can, lower your Z offset, maybe 50 microns or so, to really dig into that textured build sheet so the part doesn't release itself like we've seen here. But getting that we're getting into the colder temperatures of the months, you have to be careful about printing overnight without an enclosure and especially without some sort of a chamber heater. Ambient air temperatures can and will affect your 3D prints. And if it is cooling down wherever your machine may be, you have to realize the parts have a tendency to shrink when that occurs. And PETG is absolutely on that list. And while yes, carbon fiber will keep it from warping as much, it does not keep it from warping 100%. So how do you fix this? Well, couple of things. You can A, add a bigger brim to it, lower your Z offset and pray. B, you could put an enclosure on this machine, which Sobel sells, or I'm sure there are ones that you can download and build yourself. And in theory, you could also add an auxiliary chamber heater. We have been trying out one from G2 Systems for resin printers, but now that Big Tree Tech has the Panda Breath designed for bamboo printers, I think I'd recommend that over one designed for resin printers. It's likely a you know, more robust heater designed for larger enclosures. So I would try that first. If you happen to live where it gets colder than it does here in Florida, how do you deal with printing in the winter? Do you just assume things are going to warp? Do you heat where the machine is going to go? Do you put a chamber heater in? Do you just enclose the printer and let the heat bed heat soak the machine? Or are you a little jank and use something like a hairdryer to create a hotter environment inside of the machine. Please don't do that, but I'm sure there's at least one of you that have, and I'd love to know how you handle it down in those comments below. Speaking of Centauri Carbons, we've got a stringy mess and wobbly lines from a Centauri Carbon using Elegoo's PLA. This part actually looks pretty decent right up until the top, and certainly one of the ways to solve this would be to add support material. However, I think the best way to solve this is to lay the freaking part flat. Now, what's occurred here is they've printed it vertically. And for a vertical print, I'm reasonably impressed with how little wobble that we actually have. The VFAs and kind of issues that you see here are likely because we have two unsupported tines, basically, of a fork. And as the machine is moving back and forth, it is going to contact them a little bit and cause them to wobble. That is what we see here. This also can be caused from not enough cooling and not enough top layers. But from what I can tell, if we just laid the part down on its back, the back being this side that is completely flat, assuming it is flat on the base as well, you would completely remove this issue. You could obviously lay it on this surface, but you do have what looks like maybe where a gasket or some sort of O-ring goes that you would have to deal with that would be a bridge. Most printers will not have a problem doing that. Even ones with little to no cooling are going to succeed at that with minimal issues whatsoever. But this all comes down to orientation and how you're going to orient your part. When at all possible, the largest flat areas should be contacting the build plate, doing your best to minimize overhangs. If you do, for some reason, have to print the part in this specific orientation, you will need to add some support material here that goes all the way up. Now, you could look at doing organic or tree supports that come from the outside and end up touching the middle of the model like that, but I think that's kind of wasteful. You could do a regular snug support that will just contact the bottom, contact the top, kind of keep it in place. Now, this is part of Print Fix Friday, where we want to teach you guys and build learnable moments. This, to me, is a phenomenal learnable moment that I know I've made the mistake of, and I'm certain that I'm not alone. So, what has been your biggest, oh god, I can't believe I did that, moment? Let us know down in the comments. We have another submission from our fan discord, which you can join at the $10 tier and higher if you want to come hang out with myself and the entire 3D Musketeers team, where I am certain you will be seeing lots of behind the scenes content from Form Next, where we will be next week. So if you are going to be in Frankfurt, Germany for Form Next or happen to be in the area, I don't know where the heck we'll be. The show is massive, but if you come find us, 
We have Victoria pins on us. It's the only way to get them is to meet us in person. Come take a selfie. We are always happy to meet fans and love the process. But we've got a first layer here, a little bit of Hilbert curve, which is a wonderful, wonderful first layer to look at. But they're wondering how to get rid of some of the lines here. We've got lots of lines. This one happens to be a bit easier than you might think. There is a setting in every single slicer that I'm aware of, that we use on modern day printers at least, that says one perimeter for first layer. And well, when you do that, the part looks great. So what's gone on here is we've got multiple perimeters that are stacking up around the part. If we just did one perimeter, you wouldn't see all of this. It would just be one perimeter. Do be aware though, that means your first layer has less strength to it. And that first layer has to be basically perfect because you don't have extra perimeters to help you out if maybe one doesn't stick perfectly. So make sure your bed is ultra clean when you're going to do that. And if you are gonna be doing text on a bottom layer like this, we generally recommend to lower your Z offset a little bit. If this is a printer like a bamboo or other machines that, you know, don't have the easiest ways to lower Z offset mid print, you can use a non-textured plate. Like let's say you're using one of those PEO or PEY sheets and set it for a textured plate where the machine automatically goes a little bit closer than it thinks so that it gives a better squish. You might end up with a bit of elephant's foot, but that can be tuned out in the slicer as well. The print though itself actually looks quite nice. And certainly when it's fixed, I think it looks a lot better. And we see crisper lines. And I don't know if maybe that's the photo or maybe this particular print just looked a little bit better, but crisper lines, better first layer. I'm calling that a win for fixing prints. And what else is a win are the names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you to what you all do for making these videos possible and making trips like Form Next possible. Although we do have some sponsors for this. Uh, Prusa, Bontech, and Fiberseek are all helping us get out there and maybe there'll be some others. We'll see. Yes, I'm still negotiating things. Yes, Form Next is next week. Welcome to being a content creator. It's just how things go. <laughs> But if you do like this series and want to see more like it, make sure to leave a like, get subscribed, and stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And hey, get some sweet merch if you want to. Links are down below. And as always, keep making awesome.